Hi, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're looking at an absolute beast of a winter sleeping bag, the Rab Summit 900. It is comforted to minus 26, packs down small, obviously a down sleeping bag. So we're gonna show you all of the specs. We're gonna take it out for a wild camp and give it a bit of a review based on a night in the uh, chilly South Wales Valleys I recently did. And we'll get out and have a good look at this sleeping bag. Now it is worth pointing out straight away, this bag is not to be confused with the Rab Ascent 900. The Summit 900 is a much warmer bag uh, and it's no longer available. So you might wonder why I'm gonna do a review of this bag. Well, I picked this up used for a pretty good price, 170 pounds, which for the rating of the bag and the quality and the fact that it was barely used, makes it a really good used buy. But when I was searching for it, I could find hardly any information about the bag. So I thought I'd do a review give all the information on YouTube, and then obviously if someone else finds a bag used somewhere else, they would do a search and find a lot of information about it. Obviously, being a down sleeping bag, although it's got a temperature rating of minus 26, comfort rating that is, it does pack down pretty small and comes in at just two kilos, which for a bag of this rating is really good. Now, the pack away on this is not absolutely ideal, but I'm just showing you a realistic pack away that I did on my last wild camp. So I've not taken out the bag since because I only wild camped a couple of days ago. If you're in the house, you can get it looking neater than that. You can get it more even and you can compress it even further. So it does pack down really small, but obviously sometimes when you're packing away in a wild camp, you're never going to get it perfect. But even so, that to me is a pretty reasonable size. Now, to try and put it in the context how big this RAV bag is, this is a very good down sleeping bag from Sea to Summit. It's a Trek 1 model. So it's comparated to around five degrees, and this is it completely uncompressed. Now, stepping up a notch, we've got another very good sleeping bag, a Sea to Summit Trek 3, which is comparated to minus five, and this is it completely uncompressed. And now <laughs> we have the Rab Summit 900 uncompressed in its storage sack. Obviously you shouldn't store down bags compressed. They should be stored um, with plenty of fluff and space. So Rab do provide you with this giant <laughs> cotton bag to put it in. Obviously comfort rate to minus 26. So you can see the difference there in just how much fill the sleeping bag has and how much bigger it is than a sleeping bag with a comfort rate of say minus five. So just put it into context that this is <laughs> A very big sleeping bag, so you need some good space to store this when it's not uh, when it's not in its compression sack. Another great thing about the Rab Summit 900 bag is that it's made of very robust material. So the outer is Rab's Pertex endurance material. So if you've ever used Pertex stuff before in jackets and that kind of stuff, you might find it feels quite thin and delicate. But actually, after loads and loads of wear, walking through brambles and whatever it's actually really resistant to abrasion and tears and stuff. So it's a really strong outer material. So you can use the sleeping bag um, in a bivy or just on a ground sheet with plenty of confidence that it's not gonna rip or tear easy because it's made it a really good outer material. The inner is also Pertex. It's Pertex Micro Light. So again, a decent strong material, a lighter weight than the outer, um, but still gonna be very strong, resistant to tears, resistant to damage, and it should help keep the goose down in um, and keep the bag nice and um, warm for many, many years of, of use. In terms of the filling, obviously you can see just how um, thick this bag is. It's about 15 centimeters off the ground when you just lie it out, because that's how sort of um, well puffed up and full of uh, down it is. So the fill power, you've got 900 grams of um, fill weight of European goose down. The fill power, the top is 750 plus, which is EU regs or 850 plus US. And the base is 660 plus fill power EU or 725 plus US. So obviously different spec ratings based on whether it's US specs or EU regs. Um, but with the EU looking at 750 plus on the top and 660 on the bottom. So an extremely warm, extremely robust sleeping bag. Now, when it comes to the dimensions, it's actually quite generous. So it's not uh, a mummy bag that really pins you in. You've got room to roll over in it and move in it. So the actual dimensions, uh, the sort of widest point at the top is 72 centimeters wide. The narrowest point of the foot box is 40 centimeters wide. And in length, it's around two meters 20 or 220 centimeters. So that's just me of a measuring tape. I've tried to do it as accurate as possible, but 
Um, you know, obviously just, it may vary by one or two centimeters here and there, and it's around 15 centimeters deep. Well, it's nearly 20 past 10 now. It's pretty cold, probably about one degrees, I imagine. I don't think it's uh, freezing outside, I don't think there's any frost or anything. A little bit of a breeze, a little bit of air moving in the tent. This sleeping bag is absolutely awesome though. <laughs> it's keeping me really warm. I've not put on any thermal layers. I'm just, I don't, didn't bring a little um, hat with me or anything or a beanie, so I'm just wearing my hood to keep my head warm. But no, the sleeping bag is amazing. <laughs> I'm absolutely toasty warm. And it's comfortable as well, because it's so, it's so, um, full of filling and stuff. It's just really, really nice. <laughs> you can see just how fluffed up and thick this sleeping bag is. It is a serious piece of kit. <laughs> the tent's not very well pitched, it's very saggy. Um, ground's pretty uneven, but you can see just the sheer height of this sleeping bag. It's keeping me absolutely toasty warm with just the absolute minimal um, layers on. I've got my socks, I've got my uh, Nordisk down slippers, and moss ones just because I always wear them. But apart from that, I've got my normal trousers on, no thermal leggings, no thermal underlayers, just a very thin base layer and my cheap <laughs> luminous green uh, regatta jacket that I got for like 20 quid in a sale. So I'm incredibly warm and comfortable with way less layers than I'd normally wear. I appreciate it's not the coldest uh, conditions this sleeping bag is ever going to be used in but so far I'm mightily impressed because like I said I've got absolutely minimal layers on and I'm really nice and warm um, haven't even got the sleeping bag zipped all the way up it is just <laughs> a luxurious feeling being this warm having this much padding and down filling around you it's uh, it's very nice, so I'm hoping now to get a good night's sleep and uh, we'll catch up in the morning. Well, I can safely say this sleeping bag has broken me for any other winter sleeping bag. It is absolutely immense, incredibly warm all night. I was too hot. I was having to undo my coat and it's only a very lightweight coat, so it's just a synthetic, really lightweight, packable um, jacket. So. <laughs> I had no thermal layers and I had no nothing. I was absolutely boiling. So I appreciate it wasn't the coldest night. It was freezing at one point, made a bit of ice uh, on the inside of the, the door of the tent and stuff, there was frost outside. But cloud moved over and it was slightly milder. Um, very cold wind, it's quite a good wind chill factor a bit this morning. Wind's picked up a fair bit. Um, no, absolutely brilliantly comfortable, brilliantly warm sleeping bag. Um, and actually quite spacious as well. So I didn't use a sleeping bag liner in the end, just didn't need to. Um, but with a sleeping bag liner, <laughs> that extra bit of warmth you get from the air close to you. Yeah, I'd have uh, <laughs> I'd have been cooked this morning. I'd have been served up for breakfast. It is <laughs> absolutely brilliant sleeping bag. Um, I've no idea what it'd be like at minus 26, but I would suggest for almost all the conditions you're gonna encounter in the UK, the sleeping bag will keep you warm, comfortable and safe. Well there we have it, hopefully I've given you all the information you need to know about the RAV900 sleeping bag. As I said at the start of the video, it's no longer available for sale, but it is something you will find used on perhaps eBay or Facebook or Gumtree or some other kind of wild camping selling sites. Um, but I found a really hard time trying to get any information about this because if you type in RAV900 Summit, you just get hundreds of results for the RAV900 Ascent, which is a completely different sleeping bag. So this is an amazing sleeping bag. It is now going to be a sleeping bag I'm going to keep forever as my winter sleeping bag, just because it's packs down pretty small for the, for the temperature. It's incredibly warm. It's going to be incredibly robust. It, it is going to last for as long as I last. So yeah, hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have enjoyed it, do drop it a like. Um, if you want to see other gear reviews and stuff, then obviously subscribe to the channel, check out my gear review list and stuff and check out my other playlists. And if you wanna catch up with this sleeping bag in use, then go and watch the full video, which I will pop up at the end of this video.
go and watch me wild camping. It was a really nice camp as well. Anyway, big thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.